So in this video, I wanted to take a quick look at this fountain pen. This is the Lamy Dialogue 3 retractable fountain pen. I think most of the viewers of this channel will know that I really like Lamy's pens and I'm kind of working my way through their entire line. So when I saw a really good deal on a used Dialogue 3 a few months ago, I went ahead and purchased it, despite not really loving uh, retractable fountain pens. I recently looked at the Platinum Curitas, which is a newer uh, retractable fountain pen in a, a lower price category. This is, I don't know, maybe 250 something like that at retail. The Curitas is more like 80 but it's just inter interesting to see how the different companies make design decisions. And I'll do a follow-up on retractable fountain pens in at a later date. So back to the Dialogue 3. So Lamy has a line called the Dialogue. There's the 1, 2, and 3 now. The 1 is a ballpoint. Two is a rollerball, three is this fountain pen. Three is far and away the most popular of the dialogues. The other two, I don't really think were ever really hits. Uh, maybe the first one, but uh, anyway, it's not a very practical pen, the first one. Dialogue three, it's a twist retractable fountain pen. Most retractable fountain pens, not that there's a lot, are push button, sort of like the Pilot Vanishing Point or the new Platinum Curitas. This one, you twist the body and the nib extends. That nib, uh, this is probably, I would say, the single best part of this pen is not only the nib, but it's the fact that this is the same modular Lamy fountain pen nib that is on any Lamy fountain pen except for the Lamy 2000. So there's like 20 some odd other pens that could use this nib. So if you like Lamy's steel nibs or their gold nibs, you will like, in some respects, the plat the uh, <laughs> Dialogue 3 because it's the same nib. It also means I could slide this gold nib off and put on, this is called a Z55. I could slide this off and put on a Z50 uh, steel nib for $14, or I could pull uh, any other nib off. So just from a usefulness standpoint, it's really good. Platinum was not able to do that. Even though they use modular nibs that slide on, on and off, they used a smaller size, a non-standard size, with the Curitas, which was a major failure on their point, just from a design standpoint. Back to the Dialogue 3. So full metal body, really handsome black matte paint job, just like really well done. You could see it does pick up some grease. Uh, I'm not, I would say someone with oily hands, but uh, you could see it does pick up some oil spots. And that is just a downside of using matte black. There's no other way that's just how it is. If you have a matte black finish on your car, you're gonna have grease spots on it. It just happens. That said, it's not that bad, and it's just a great looking pen. It has these lines going down it, sort of like, I don't know if they're race stripes or what, but they're cool. The main thing they do is they let you see if your pen is lined up. So right now they're lined up, and the pen is fully closed. When you turn it, that's not fully closed. Here, they don't line up, so it's obviously not fully closed, but you don't really have to worry about that was the nib is out. It's gonna be obvious. It's more like right here, it's almost closed, but not quite closed. Why does that matter? Was it's not like the nib is poking out. It matters because right here is a little door or window, whatever you wanna call it. And this keeps the nib basically sealed on the inside so it doesn't dry out. When you twist to open the pen, the door opens up and the nib extends. That's a pretty slick mechanism, especially considering it's all metal hardware. Uh, that could not have been easy to pull off. It works really well, much better than the door on the vanishing point and way, way better than the plastic setup on the Curitas, which is just, uh, I don't like how it's designed at all. The uh, pen does have a clip. Obviously the clip is, some people would say upside down or backwards, however you wanna call it because again, this is where the nib extends. So the clip is where you wanna hold the pen, which I know really bothers some people. Uh, some people will remove the clip from their uh, vanishing point. This is, you, you can't do that with this one. So you are stuck with it, but it's pretty unobtrusive and it's also a wide pen. So I don't think you really need to hold it right on the point. If you use a kind of a three part grip like this, it's really not a problem and the clip really does not bother me. I'm able to hold around it with no problems. I like this design better than on the Pilot Vanishing Point. 
but maybe that's just me. The clip is not affected by opening the pen. That doesn't make any difference. The clip is spring-loaded, so it has a nice little action there. It, it doesn't work that well as a clip, but it looks very cool and it feels cool. Uh, the main part about this is you never put your pen in upside down, which you know the clip's here, so you always put the pen this way. Nothing on the top of the pen, it's just very simple, very clean. Has that sort of classic modern design that, not classic design, has that modern design that is so, uh, so tightly associated with Lamy. So at the front of the pen, there is the opening with the window we just talked about, and there's a little bit of a rubber grommet right here. And that doesn't seem to have any function at first, but when you look at it more closely, it acts as a damper. So when you extend the nib, there's a metal housing around the feed section that abuts this rubber grommet. They're like in contact. And it, this rubber grommet dampens the nib section so that when you're writing, there's no rattle or movement. It acts just as a, uh, just again, like I said, it's a dampener. So there's no movement or anything like that. The rubber sort of absorbs any movement and the two are touching. So it always feels like a really nice, solid experience. And it's completely silent as you write, which we'll see in a second. Quiet action, but there is right here, a little bit of a snap. So you know when it feels shut. To open the pen up, you twist it as if you wanna close it further. Right now I know it's closed, closed and I feel some resistance, but if I hold the bottom firmly and I keep going, it will unscrew and it moves really slow. It's a very fine thread. It comes off. We can see this piece is all metal except for another O-ring here. And that O-ring, again, it makes everything just feel nice and tight. This piece, again, is all, all metal, maybe aluminum, hard to tell, maybe zinc, probably zinc, and then uh, maybe magnesium, hard to tell. Anyway, uh, brass threads, I think, and then really nothing else in there, no openings or apertures or anything like that. Here we have the inside of the pen itself. This is sort of the, uh, the part that does all the work and moves everything in and out. It's, uh, it's not super obvious how it works, but it doesn't really matter which you don't ever need to function it on its own. And the, the housing is very simple. You just get a cartridge, in this case, a Lamy T10 cartridge, or you can put a converter in here, and that's it. It just goes in there. There's no pieces that fit over this. There's no weird housings or protectors. That's it. It's just you put in your cartridge, and you're good to go. Again, you can do a converter, but uh, I tend to like Lamy's cartridges. They have a high capacity, and they always work well, and I've never had a leak from one of their pens, uh, one of their cartridges. And then if you wanted to activate this, uh, I always forget how to do it. And then I remember a minute later. I don't even know. It's not even that easy. You would have to twist it or push it or something. But it doesn't matter because once you just screw this down, you could feel it basically line up and you give it a little more twist and it's good. And then you give it another little twist and it's fully locked in place. One of the things with the Dialog 3 you have to keep in mind is while it uses Lamy's standard nib type, it uses their 14K bicolor gold nib. And that's like Lamy's Z55. In black, it's called the Z57. That's a slightly more expensive nib. It's not sold with the Z57 yet. Uh, it's sold with this, the Z55. I have this one in, you'd probably just see it there. Uh, it says uh, fine. And then uh, just standard stuff, so 14K, 585, so 58.5% gold, which is 14 karat. I'll do another video about the Lamy gold nibs. I really like them. I know they're not for everyone. Uh, I think it's a really nice upgrade on Lamy's standard nib, while not necessarily being worth the extra money for most people. But I really like it. It makes the nib soft and springy in a really nice way. It writes a little wetter. That's why I went with fine for this one instead of medium. Uh, but honestly, since I bought this used and it was a great deal, I would have bought it in any size. But I would say size down if you're used to a Lamy steel and you're going to the gold. Now, quick writing with this one, which I know this video is dragging on. 
So this is the Lamy Dialog 3. I think you could probably tell just from my scribbles that this is a very wet fine. It's as wet as a typical European medium or a Japanese course. So putting a lot of ink, and this is not a weird ink. This is just Lamy's standard purple ink. It writes really nicely. I feel like it's not super smooth, but it's a nice smoothness and it's got a lot of spring to it. I wouldn't say it's in any way a flex nib or anything like that, but it does have a lot of spring. And if you want a nib that you really uh, see a lot of shading come out of your inks, this is a really nice choice. Again, I've done a lot of videos about Lamy's nibs, so I won't go too long. And I'll be doing a follow-up video at some point on their steel nib versus their gold nib, just because I think it's really interesting. And I resisted buying their steel nibs for a very long time. I Sorry, resisted buying their gold nibs for a very long time. I just didn't think it was worth the money. And having used this and some others for a few months, I'm, uh, I don't know if I'm quite converted, but I'm definitely growing more and more interested in their gold nib selection. Lastly, I just wanted to talk about this from a size and usability standpoint. It's not that practical of a pen. It is, it's big and it's heavy. You can check out unsharpened.com for all the specs, but it's a big pen. It's a very wide pen. I think it's like 14, 15, 15 millimeters, untapered, no grip, nothing to hold on to, just that matte metal. It's not slippery, but there's just there's no uh, concessions made for the fact that you're supposed to hold on to this thing. So while I don't have any real problems with it, it's going to be too wide for some people, and it is on the heavy side. Size-wise, here's it. It is, uh, these are half-inch markings, so one, two, three, four, five and a half inches. Again, go to Unsharpen for the full specs in weight and millimeters and stuff like that. Here's it next to a Sharpie. Clearly much larger than the Sharpie, which is a pretty good size comparison for like a Pilot Custom 74 or a Platinum 3776. They're not too far off from a uncapped Sharpie. And you can see it just, it dwarfs pens like that. Uh, it doesn't post, right? So it's more equivalent to a posted fountain pen, but not quite as long and heavier than most of the fountain pens that we look at. And here is it next to a Lamy Safari, which is, or sorry, the Vista Safari, whatever, it's the same pen, right about the same size as a capped Safari. Here's it next to the Safari. We'll get those nibs lined up as opposed to the backs. So it's like a full inch longer than an uncapped Safari. And then let's look at it next to a capped Safari. The cap safari is maybe a quarter inch longer, three eighths of an inch longer, something like that. So just for size comparisons, it's really hard to tell. You really have to get one of these in your hands and just say like, yeah, I like how that feels or I don't like how that feels. I would say for the most part, most people don't like it. Uh, and you know, maybe some people convince themselves they do just because they spent $300 on a fountain pen. But I would say on the whole, uh, most people are not going to love how it feels and I would say I love it, but I like the pen and I really like the nib. So i am definitely been enjoying using it for the past few months. I don't think this is going to be something I keep in my collection over the long term. Lastly, I just say I've had no problems with this with leaking or drying out. It's just really worked really well. The window is doing its job. Definitely no leaks or any problems like that. No dry starts. So from a day-to-day -day standpoint, it's actually been surprisingly practical. I bought this thinking it would never leave my desk. Uh, not that people are taking things away from their homes or desks too often right now, but uh, no leaks, no problems. Carrying around the house has been great. Even taking it out here and there and in a bag or something has been a really good experience. So maybe it's a little bit more practical than I would have thought or have given it credit for, but it's holding up well in that regard. So. I think that should about cover, cover it. That's the Lamy Dialog 3 retractable fountain pen. Uh, I think it's a fun pen. If you could buy it used for a good deal, I would consider it, especially considering the nib, if it's in good shape, is worth 75, 80 bucks. So, and it can go on your other pens. I could pull this nib off now and put it on this Vista 
and then theoretically still have a pretty good retractable fountain pen in the Dialog 3. So very interesting pen, not one I would definitely recommend you buy unless it checks a lot of boxes for you, but I do like it a lot more than that Curidus, and I do like it a whole lot more than the Vanishing Point as well. So thanks for watching.